I get to do a cylinder head gasket on my 87 Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. I replaced the heater core probably 200 miles ago because of overheating issues and there was a leak. So more than likely, it led to why my cylinder head went bad or my head gasket went bad. There's leaking around it, has overheating issues. So some of this leaking right here, you can see some right down there above the water pump on the head gasket and it went all the way around the block. Most of this right now is either oil from the valve cover or PB blast to soak these uh, exhaust manifold bolts to help get them off. But you can still see maybe some cylinder head leaking back there, maybe. Probably not, but I'm just gonna time lapse it or go through it and uh, tear it down and then we'll I'll talk some more when it comes to putting a head gasket back into the truck or car. Unfortunately, when I was taking this out, I went through and uh, checked for flatness of the head. And right in the center here, from both edges, it's about eight thousandths up. So that, I don't know what the spec is, but that's definitely not within spec. So what I did is I started taking off these uh, lifters and I'll just show you how quick, how to do so. First off, you wanna make sure that the lobe is pointed direct opposite of what you need. So, just slightly right there, go like that. Come in here with your screwdriver or something like that along those lines and just pry up and just go off the, when you're going this way, pry up off of this way, this one. When, you're, when I did this one, I did the opposite lifter right here. So take that off. And then again, just another little quick rotation of the lifter or of the lobe, get it so it's pointed straight up. And you come in here, come around the camera. Whoops. And pry up off the lip, make sure not to be touching the lifter, but, and just go like that, and then it'll come easily out, so. All right, to get the lifter out so that I can get it off the machine shop, and so I can get these springs out, which I'll do next, you gotta go in here, take a little, screwdriver on a wrench or you can try it with a screwdriver but i have this so i'm going to do it this way break those loose make sure that you're having enough pressure this way so that you don't have it come out and slip out and then just undo that all right all that's done now i'm going to pull this cam out the biggest thing is to make sure that when you're coming out is that you don't glance the cam bearings on the way out with the lobes or anything, you don't want to gouge either one of them. So, let's see if I can get this to come out. Come on. There we go. Set that down. 
sit it in a place that it's not going to get knocked over. So we're going to hope it's not going to be there. For these lifters right here, some of them will come out, some of them won't. I got all but this one out beforehand. And this way, I this is how I've done it so far, as I just go from the top here and slide them right out. The ones that slid out came out super easy, but that one just did not want to go. So, and then now time to start beating out the bow springs. So. I got this head uh, sent off machined and then put new cam bearings back in. And I just started going through the process of uh, rebuilding the head or putting it back together. So I'm gonna go through quickly how to do a valve or a, put a valve in. I got this nicer spring compressor uh, on Amazon. So far it's worked beautifully better than just the little tiny clamped ones that go from side to side like that. On top of that, this uh, little whatever you want to call this is a pain in the butt to get into. So it's definitely helped. So here we go. And for those valve stem caps, I like to go in here and put a little dollop of uh, oil on there so they stick in a little bit better. And that way they actually like stick there and don't just straight fall off when they're dry. They're stuck in there. And then I kind of back this off just a hair. that and everything seats out really nice get, come in here and just give it a little tap to get everything set up and as well as that you need to go through and blow out all the oil lines and everything else so that if there's any dust collected because I sat around with mine for a while and definitely had dust collected all over the thing so. Since I'm going to be putting this head in pretty much dry when it comes to oil, I went and used uh, assembly lube for all the bearings and all the surfaces and I got the uh, lifters over here sitting in a tub of oil and I'm going to put the cam in and then the lifters behind that and then start putting the lifter arms, whatever those are called, in. And again, just do your best to... What? And again, do your best to not hit the bearing while going in like that. And having the seal already in here, it's kind of making it a little bit difficult as they don't really want to go in super smoothly. Yikes. All right, well that's in. I'm gonna put the little cam container in quickly. All right, so the only good way I found to put these lifters in isn't mo the most gracious and beautiful way, but if it kills my motor, I probably won't up this, upload this thing. But make sure again, the cam lobe is pointing the opposite direction, just like when you're knocking them out and then kind of finagle that in there. And you come in here and you give a good whack to right there. And obviously if you miss, you're gonna screw your cam. So be very careful. And then go through and 
turn the head all the way around and notice if there's any like obvious more a bunch more obvious tension in it and then you can also do that by adjusting the next cam lobe in line but right now i think it's the head's all put back together and in halfway good working order so all right i got the head assembled i have put the intake on i know i probably should do that afterwards but getting to these bolts right underneath here is a complete pain in the butt so i'm putting it together now and hopefully it'll help to put it in the engine and while I was taking it apart, uh, I lost, or I got the dowel pens that sit right here. They got all beat up and I could not find uh, replacements for the life of me. So what you do when you do that is you take an old head bolt, cut off the head of it and use that as an alignment pin for your gasket and for your head and it makes things really simple. So we're gonna try to put this head in halfway gracefully. One thing I mentioned about uh, using the old head studs to cut and use as guides, make sure to cut a groove in the top right there so you can get a screwdriver in there and turn it out because I didn't and I had to take the head back off, put it back on and readjust the height of these and then ended up breaking the timing mark off this plastic cover because it was too brittle. So that'll be a pain in the butt to figure out. But now I'm just gonna go through the torquing sequence which is, uh, 80 to 90 foot pounds, so I'll do three stages, 30, 60, 90, go through that, and then a two, three time belt is actually fairly simple. When you're putting this on, make sure to start putting the teeth into the crank and then around the uh, oil pump and timing distributor gear. Uh, on some of them, they'll have a little point to them. On mine, for whatever reason, the years, they don't. And then you come up around the cam here and then this will be loose right here will be over here what you do to get that over is you just go in here and you'll have to go and I can't remember how exactly I had it all lined up but you just pry it like this right here so that you can get the belt over the edge of this and then start the bolt that's right there and let it loose there's a little bolt right there possibly and then once you get it on come back in here and just go like that to get some more tension back onto the belt as well as when I was taking it off you can see some little paint marks on points right there and there's two paint marks there on top of this pointer to help get everything timed back up correctly because when I did it there's a pointer that's supposed to be right here that broke off and it still is technically pointing right, but it broke off so it's hard to actually see. But those timing mark or timing paint marks that I had put on just help to easily line everything back up. Which also has a reference. I painted the point where it's the top dead notch on the balancer so that it lines up directly with the, the top dead center mark so that when I start timing it, it's all good. And then to get this to go, you just have to do the normal thing where you Put the belt on get it all tightened up that way you can get this to crank or to torque down to spec otherwise you're just going to keep spinning it and spinning it all right so we got everything else buttoned up uh one fun thing is before putting the serpentine belt on make sure to plug this wire in on the back side of the alternator otherwise like there's not enough clearance for it to get in and out which is dumb but it is what it is so put that on before you go in to tighten the crankshaft on the end and then otherwise we're just kind of letting the coolant uh, air pockets empty out before we start it up. We think we have everything done, hopefully. So I'm just going to start cranking it. 
see what happens. so